Good morning and welcome to all of you that have joined together for worship this morning. Um, those who are also joining us on our Facebook live stream at Central Mondovi, um, just type that into the Facebook thing and you find our live stream. And also those that are overhearing our worship on our radio frequency 90.9 FM. So welcome. Um, I, first of all, I want to say a special word of thanks to the to the youth and to their families and to the um, leaders and helpers for our VBS this past week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, um, capped off with a, um, with a fun concert with uh, Tim Korber, who is a pastor, former pastor, singer, songwriter. Uh, his current occupation is a lawyer, but uh, he does, writes his own songs and they're just incredibly reflective. So we sat out in the parking lot and had a kind of an outdoor concert it was really fun. So thanks for those to those that helped with the meals. Every evening we had a meal at 5.30 and then we started our VBS at 6. So again, thanks to everyone um, who made that possible. Um, the flowers in front, I noticed them when I came in. I said, those, those are amazing. Um, but they're for, in memory of Margaret Sather. So Margaret's family is here as they have gathered to celebrate Margaret's life as she... Uh, died during the, the COVID times, and so they're now able to get together and celebrate uh, her life and to give thanks for that and to commend her to, uh, to her faith. So welcome, so good to have you with us today. Um, just a word about masks. Masks are voluntary, um, yet out of concern for our vaccinated and unvaccinated neighbors, uh, we may need to consider voluntarily kind of going back to more of a masked kind of state. Um, so uh, there's going to be no mandates, no pronouncements from on high like that's ever worked before. And, uh, uh, but I'm just concerned at this time as we kind of make our way through this last uh, surge. So um, just something to think about. Also, um, we need readers for um, coming up in front and reading our, reading our lessons as we gather for worship is an important part of participating in our worship. And also we're going to be needing um, communion assistance um, as, we, as we go forward. So today we are beginning <coughs> our series on baptism. And so some of you may have noticed that the baptismal font is in a particularly inconvenient spot. And so that is very intentional. 
um, that, you know, that sometimes our baptism just gets in the way, and that is a good thing. So let us uh, join in our call to worship. Let, let us gather in this holy house and celebrate the mysteries and gifts God offers. Let us honor the gift of baptism and welcome all into this holy house. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. So join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. And so we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. And when we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. And at the cross, you washed us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and for the water in this font and for all water everywhere and for the waters of the Buffalo, the Chippewa, and the Mississippi that give life to the land around us. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love, and satisfy all who thirst, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able as we join in our hymn. Um, it's up on the screen. Let us build a house where love can dwell, and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell, our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock the faith and walls of grace. Hear the love. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. We join in our responsive reading of the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us, <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray, God of mystery, your gift of baptism is a mystery, even as it is a promise and a responsibility. Teach us what it means and also allow us the space to wonder. Amen. And you may be seated. So for the children that are joining us on our live stream, I want you to get some water. So go get a glass of water and go to the sink and get some water because we're going to have some baptism fun. So th today we're going to be learning about baptism. And one of the things I love about baptism is that it always, it is the one thing, it is the one thing I can always go to to know and, and to know that I am loved and cared about by God. And so I think that's really important. So sometimes we have to do things to help us remember our baptism. Otherwise, we have a tendency to forget about it. Yeah. So if you're at home and you're saying, hey, mom, dad, what day was I baptized? What was it like? Who was there? How many families showed up? Did you have a party? Ask all those questions, okay, about your baptism. And that's one way of remembering your baptism. But another one is to take water. Like maybe you're washing your face. <laughs> Remember your baptism. And one of the things we can do that's a little more like what church does is that we can, and I'm asking all of you, if you would like to come as you leave worship, to do this to remember your baptism, that you take a little water on your finger, and if you get people wet a little bit, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> so you have, you have water in your glass at home? Okay, I want you to stick your finger in the glass, okay? And go, um, in the name of the Father, and of the Son on your forehead. We're going to make a cross. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I am baptized. Okay? Amen. And that's how we remember our baptism. So thank you. And thank you, Rosie, for being our reader today. And if you want to help Rosie out, please sign up. Today's preparation reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and extorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Word of God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. It's on 216 in our hymnals. Be doing this reading the acclamation. So, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Alleluia. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. And you may be seated for our reading of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. 
though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Word of God. Word of life. So brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We all have our place. That place we go that is like a refuge, a place of safety and peace. Sometimes it's a chair or a space in our homes, like a back deck or under a tree. Sometimes it's a place like a lakeside view or a woodland retreat, a place that in words we cannot describe that is spiritual, a place where God finds us. So baptism is also that place because we carry our baptisms with us every day. We may not think of it, nor we may not even think our baptisms are important but those baptismal waters follow us every day of our lives. As we dive into a lake or a pool or fish from a river, to the sink where we wash our face, to the drink of a cool water on a hot, humid day, our baptisms are there. Baptism follows us each and every day. So where is your baptism place? your place of refuge and strength. Because as the psalmist sings of baptism for us today, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Baptism is that place, that river, that city of God where God dwells with us because any place where God dwells is God's city. God owns it. And so it is. Baptism is the place where God dwells with us. But sometimes, as I read this psalm, I think the psalmists get a little bit overdramatic. I mean, listen to this. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Isn't that just a little bit overdramatic? Yikes. I remember visiting some of my elderly Norwegian relatives near Trondheim um, in a little town called Hell. Yes, I have relatives from Hell. Do you? Um, it's, and it's spelled H-E-L-L. I even had a little train ticket. It said, Til Hell to Baga, which means to Hell and back. And so, but hell in Norwegian is a word that means fortune, not like we would think of it. But it's kind of a fun, fun thing. Um, so anyway, I was a student at the University of Oslo years ago, and so I was able to travel north and to go up to Trondheim and meet these elderly relatives as I was a student at the University of Oslo. And I remember going there and visiting and having dinner, you know, the typical Norwegian dinner. It was awesome. And I remember these elderly relatives were looking at their young American family member, sure and certain in my youth that the world was just going to swallow me up. And so the Norwegian dialects made it really hard to have a conversation. But one phrase that they mentioned several times stuck in my mind when they say, Verden er farlig, or the world is dangerous. 
At the time, I thought, what are they worried about? <laughs> now, all these years later, I think they were more correct than I thought at the time. And I just had this thought that these elderly relatives who are probably no longer with us, but they are the ones who survived the Nazi occupation of Norway. And so they knew, they knew the world was dangerous. So the world is dangerous, like the psalmist infers, or like, like when one is joyfully riding one's mountain bike through the woods and wipe out and break five ribs and end up nine days in the hospital, or out for a glorious fall afternoon boat ride and end up in the ICU with a near drowning, and you all have your own stories that you share as community, as family, as friends, of, of tragic and unexpected injury and death and near death. The world is dangerous. And likewise, there are many who live with fear and anger over what they believe the world has become, the coarseness of some public discourse and the displays of vulgarity. It doesn't have to be that way but it makes the world feel like a more dangerous place. Last fall, it's November, I met with my wife Amy's rescuers from our boat accident, remember the ICU thing? And one evening and a couple months after the accident, and one rescuer was a nice guy uh, who years earlier married a local Lutheran, found out, probably voted for Biden. The other was a nice guy, a little older, who I remember was wearing a Trump 2020 cap. And when I met them later, two months later, they were all the same. But this is not about political beliefs, so I'm toying with you. This was about the care and the concern of humanity who finds us in our time of need. So with snow on the ground outside, with a fire in the stove, we reprocess the events, how one waited out standing up to his tippy toes, barely keeping his nose above the water so he could reach out and grab Amy's hand and pull her back, and how the other one was gathering blankets and calling for the ambulance. Thus, in the course of our visit, we shared our various points of view of the day's events and how everyone survived, and then other local stories of days gone by of who knew who and when but we all left our visit grateful for each other. Thus, that lake shore, that coming out of the water, to be wrapped in the arms of refuge, care, and compassion was literally salvation. It was a place of holy baptism. There really is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Therefore, in the midst of a world that can be dangerous and conflicted, of which the psalmist knew well, there is always the place of God's presence. Baptism makes that presence real. So when all else fails, even when our most safest and most sacred place no longer feels that way, then remember your baptism and remember what your baptism does for you, how it saves and forgives and renews you every day. Every day you are born again, so no one does born again better than the Lutherans. But more importantly, your baptism is the place you live every day, whose streams make glad the city of God. And to that city and to that place of God is where your baptism always takes you. So when you wash your face, dive into a lake, or from a baptismal font, dip your finger into the waters and say in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I am baptized. Because that's where God dwells, the city of God. This is the place God finds you. And so we all have our place. The place we go that is like a refuge, a place of safety, a place of peace. So into the waters of life, of holy baptism, we go. Amen.
So let us then join in our hymn as we sing, um, How Firm a Foundation. Let us, let us sing. rise as you're able as we join in prayer as we pray for the church the world and all those in need O Lord in the waters of baptism you offer us a covenant a promise like no other the chance to be your people and may we always remember to whom we belong and whose love has surrounds us and walks with us every day in the promise of our baptism almighty God hear our prayer and the world can often be a frightening place with dangers unimagined and threats real and perceived. Yet you have washed, protected, and fortified us in the waters of baptism so to go out with good courage, working tirelessly to bring about your peaceful kingdom on earth. Almighty God, hear our prayer. And bless all those who are baptized, all of us. Keep us all steadfast in your word and empower us to be uh, your people in the world and to uplift this world in the love that you have given us and the love you share and bring upon this world. Almighty God, and bring all the weary to your streams of healing water. Assure them of your care, your presence, and your power. Be especially with Rose McConnell and Daryl Dykeman and all whom we name in, the, in this quietness and silence and secure and refuge of our hearts. Almighty God, hear our prayer. And Lord of hosts, you are our refuge forever in this life and in the life to come. Unite us with those who precede us in life and in death as we remember Margaret Sather and Susan Lynette and those who grieve them. So that we, but also we are held in the promise that we will one day inhabit your holy city again as neighbors and friends and family. Almighty God, hear our prayer. And we pray this week for Katie Mallon, Ed and Shirley Mallon, Scott Mallon, Chad Marslick, Kenna and Kinsey, um, Dan, Dan and Trina, Trina Marslick, Kayla Marslick, Aiden, Cole and Bryson, and we also rejoice with Dennis and Judy Thompson as they have celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. For these and so many others, Lord, we lift to you and pray your blessings upon them and upon us all. Almighty God, hear our prayer. And so we entrust our supplications to your capable hands, both gentle and strong. Receive us and our prayers and make us faithful to you, the lover of our souls. Amen. 
And so the peace of the Lord be with you always. So I invite you to turn to your neighbor if you're comfortable shaking hands, either do an elbow bump or just do the, the peace wave, you know, but share the peace together. And as we share the peace, um, we also give thanks as we receive our offerings. And the offerings have been received in the, in the plate in the back there. Um, and so thank you for your gifts um, as we celebrate God's bounty and goodness among us. And when you're done, you may be seated and... Um, we will join then in our offering prayer. So let us pray. You have welcomed us into your family through the gifts of holy baptism. We gratefully return to you a portion of what you have given us. Receive these gifts, holy God, to welcome others as you have welcomed us. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So I invite you to please rise again as we receive this blessing that the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all hope and joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Again, thank you so much for worshiping this morning and those who have joined us online. Um, so if you're at online, you can go and get your coffee now and drink it because we're going to go into the fellowship hall and have coffee as well. So uh, we go our way singing our closing hymn, Go Make Disciples, hymn 540. Let us sing. Yeah.